Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics. Today we'll be covering the Space Marine successor traits from the new book. So the way that the new successor traits work is that if you don't pick one of the main Legion traits, such as Ultramarines, White Scars, etc., then you get to pick two successor traits out of a list of 17 of them, and you apply both of those traits to your army. I'm quite a fan of how these new successor traits work, because it means that you can pick two tactics that actually reflect your fighting style and how your army likes to perform on the tabletop. So in this video I'm going to run down a list of all 17 of the chapter tactics and I'm going to order them from worst to best as to which ones I think are most worth taking. So without further ado, let's go into them. Starting off on the lowest tier, I'll call these the D tier, the ones that I think that are too situational to bother with compared with some of the others for the most part. Firstly we have Stoic. Basically this just adds one to your leadership. I don't think that this is worth taking virtually ever unless you're running very big squads and even then it's a bit situational. Basically it requires you to have lost a lot of marines and even then you might well have passed the morale test anyway because marines have high leadership and get to re-roll morale. So I personally not bother with this. Then we have fearsome aspects. Basically this is minus one to enemy's leadership when they're within three inches of one of your models. In my opinion, that's far too close to be practical most of the time. You're only going to get there when you get to close combat in turn 2 or turn 3, and at best you'll make one more enemy model flee due to morale, if they're even susceptible to morale in the first place. So I'd avoid that one too. Thirdly, we have Indomitable. That basically means that only one of your models can ever flee from morale in each unit. I'd say that's, if anything, worse than Stoic, because very unlikely to lose more than one model to morale anyway, it's just not something that generally happens with marines, so buffing your own leadership even further isn't really very good. Next is Warded, this gives you a 5 plus feel no pain type stage against mortal wounds, and while this is very good against some armies such as smite spam and things, the vast majority of armies don't really tend to inflict that many mortal wounds on you, so while it's good against some, it's useless against the majority of the people you'll be playing, so unless you actually know you're facing psychers, it's definitely not worth it. The next one I've put in the D tier is Knowledge is Power. This basically gives psychers re-roll wands when they're casting or denying. I'd say this is more situational than bad per se, because re-roll wands when you're casting is actually quite a powerful buff, but I just don't think that it's worth taking for an entire chapter tactic, because it will only affect maybe two or three models in your army at most. I could see it maybe being run in a Supreme Command detachment. Say, for example, if you were just to take three librarians in a Supreme Command, he'll give you some powerful casters. So, uh, there is an option there, but uh, I wouldn't take it as part of your whole army's chapter tactic. And finally, we have Inherit the Primarch. Basically, I've only put this so low because it's directly inferior to taking one of the original chapter traits, such as Ultramarines or White Scars. If you're thinking about taking this, it's worth just running them as that particular chapter, that you don't lose anything for it, as far as I know. Moving on to the C tier, these are ones that I think that are situationally fairly good, but not something to base your entire strategy around. So, first we have Stalwart. Stalwart basically means that if your opponent attacks your infantry with a high strength weapon, and it was wound them on a 2, and you ignore the two, and that fails. I'd say it's it's not a terrible buff, but it only really ever applies when your opponent's going to shoot some of your low toughness models with a really high strength weapon, such as firing a last cannon at a intercessor or something like that. So it's quite good in that specific circumstances, but that's rarely going to happen. Usually, he'll be firing lower strength weapons against your infantry and the higher strength weapons against your tanks and the buff wouldn't apply in either case. So it's not bad, but I'd say that there's stronger defensive buffs and stronger tactics in general. The next one I've put down here is Rapid Assault. Basically, Rapid Assault uh, Space Marines ignore the penalty for uh, advancing and then shooting with their assault weapons. And that gives them a little bit of extra firepower on the turns that they advance, and which isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination but I don't think that it's that great, because 
even if you don't have this trait, you can still advance and shoot with your assault weapons and get most of the damage output. And a lot of the time you won't need to advance anyway, you could just move normally and shoot with the assault weapons if that extra bit of damage really makes a difference. So again, it only buffs damage in a very specific circumstances. It might not be terrible if you have absolute loads of assault weapons and you feel the need to advance all the time. Uh, next one on this list we have Preferred Enemy. Preferred Enemy is really good against one individual army. So basically what you do is, as part of your chap stats, you have to select one of the list of different enemy races to be good against. You either select Necrons, Tau, Heretic Astartes, Eldar, Tyranids, or Orcs. And in the fight phase, you get to reroll all hits on a turn that you charged, were charged, or made a heroic intervention. I'd say that this is really good against that particular army, but the thing is you have to pick one of those at the list building stage when you don't know what your opponents might be necessarily. I'd say that if you were just doing this blind, this would be probably worth picking Heretic Astartes, as that covers quite a lot of different races, such as Thousand Suns, Death Guard, and Chaos Space Marines. You see them quite a bit about in tournament play. But as it is, it's a fairly good buff, but only in a few games, so that's why I don't think it's worth it compared with the ones that apply every game. And the last one that I've selected for the C tier is Born Heroes. This gives your characters a 6 inch heroic intervention, so basically the same as the Space Wolves characters get. It's good for characters because it can catch your opponent off guard if, say, you have a fighty smash captain or something sat on an objective and they put an infantry unit or other unit within 6 inch range and you basically get to do a heroic intervention and if they didn't charge you then they can't even fight your character in the fight phase because they didn't select him as a charge. So I think it has definitely got possibility for catching your opponent off guard but on the whole it's not going to come into effect that often and if your opponent knows that you've got it they can just put their units outside of 6 inches of your character's heroic intervention thing if they don't want to be heroic intervened so your opponent can counter it quite easily. So that concludes my review of the lower tier successor chapter tactics that you can take. Please continue to my next video if you want to hear about the stronger chapter tactics and how they can be used in a compressed space marine army.